So Colin explained to everybody why he sat down. And he wants some changes made in America. Uh, he said he's not getting up ever again. But to really respond to Colin Kaepernick, we must uh, go back in time when the Star Spangled Banner was written and even speak about the man himself that wrote it, Francis Scott Key. There was a verse that was taken out that nobody really knows about. There's a lot of reasons why black people shouldn't even sing that song. But let's go ahead and look at the history of this now. They said to understand the full Star Spangled Banner story, you have to understand the author. Now, Key was an aristocrat and a city prosecutor in Washington, D.C. He was like most enlightened men at the time, not against slavery. He just thought that blacks were mentally inferior. Masters should treat them with more Christian kindness. He supported sending free blacks, not slaves, back to Africa and with a few exceptions was about as pro-slavery, anti-black, and anti-abolitionist as you can get at the time. So the guy who wrote the Star Spangled Banner didn't like us like that, but yet we sing in his song. Of particular note was Key's opposition to the idea of the colonial Marines. The Marines were a battalion of runaway slaves who joined the British Royal Army in exchange for their freedom. The Marines were not only a terrifying example of what slaves would do if given the chance, but also a repudiation of the white superiority that men like Key were so invested in. Now, all of these ideas and concepts came together around uh, 1815 at the Battle of Bladensburg, where Key, who was serving as a lieutenant at the time, ran into a battalion of colonial Marines. His troops were taken to the woodshed by the very black folks he disdained, and he fled back to his home in Georgetown to lick his wounds. The British troops, emboldened by the victory in Bladensburg, then marched into Washington, D.C., burning the Library of Congress, the Capitol Building, and the White House. You can imagine that Key was very much in his feelings, seeing black soldiers trampling on the city he so desperately loved. Now, did you learn know anything about the colonial Marines on the British side that was made up of runaway slaves? They didn't teach you that in school, right? Because they want to hide this sort of thing. Continuing. A few weeks later in September of 1815, far from being a captive, Key was on a British boat begging for the release of one of his friends, a doctor named William Means. Key was on the boat waiting to see if the British would release his friend when he observed the bloody battle of Fort McHenry in Baltimore on September 13, 1815. America lost the battle but managed to inflict heavy casualties on the British in the process. This inspired Key to write the Star Spangled Banner right then and there but no one remembers that he wrote a full third stanza decrying the former slaves who were now working for the British Army. This is the verse that we're talking about. And the verse goes like this. Where is that band who vauntingly swore that the havoc of war and the battle's confusion, a home and a country should leave us no more. Their blood has washed out their foul footsteps pollution. No refuge could save the hireling and slave from the terror of flight or the gloom of the grave and the star spangled banner in triumph doth wave o'er the land, of free and home of the brave. In other words, key was saying that the blood of all former slaves and hirelings on the battlefield will wash away the pollution of the British invaders. With Key still bitter that some black soldiers got the best of them in a few weeks earlier, the Star Spangled Banner is as much as a patriotic song as it is a diss track to black people who had the audacity to fight for their freedom, perhaps. That's why it took almost 100 years for the song to become the national anthem. So, as you can see, Francis Scott Key didn't like black people. He was pissed off that the former slaves was trying to fight for their freedom with the British, and he wrote that third verse in glee of a lot of these soldiers being dead. So it makes us think a little different about singing the Star Spangled Banner, right? Now let's talk about Colin Kaepernick. There are a lot of people that are pissed off at him. And it's funny how these same people that's pissed off get mad when someone want to take away their Second Amendment right, or they threaten to take away their Second Amendment right. But you know, it's a certain rule for those people, and I like to call that white Christian Sharia law, because most of these white supremacists, they claim they're Christian, and they follow a version of Sharia law, because they say the Muslims uh, uh, carry Sharia law, and they kill, and they do all this other stuff, but you do Sharia law all over the world, and even here in America, constantly. And I want you to see how they respond to Colin Kaepernick just for having a right to do what America's supposed to be 
freedom of speech, freedom of religion, so on and so on. So a guy named Tony, as you can see, he said, I hope your neck gets broke in week one. You effing, he said the N word you're in America making millions of American dollars. You are the problem. So this Sharia law member wants the man's neck broke because he sat down. Now, how many times do they say, well, these black people need to protest peacefully. They don't need to be destroying buildings. Just be peaceful. He sat down. He was peaceful. Yet you want the man's neck broke. All right. The next guy, James says, hope you tear your ACL next game. Stupid. It says N word. So you want his neck broke. You want his ACL torn because he sat down in peaceful protest. He didn't go, he didn't stop anybody else from standing or putting their hand on their heart or singing or none of that. He just sat down. The third one says you're a dumb effing in the N word. You must have it so hard with at a hundred million dollars. Do us a favor and take the rest of your monkeys and go. That's another thing. Anytime a black man says or do something, they always got to refer to the money that he's making because they are so jealous minded of a black person making any kind of money. Hell, they tell me that sometimes. Why are you always talking about black people are being treated bad? You look like you're doing good for yourself. That sort of thing. That's, that's what they do. But when white people do something, they never say that about a white person. They only say that about black people. Now it's funny that this man is sitting here just doing things peacefully and that's the way he feel. But is he lying? Then they want to turn into an argument. He's disrespecting the military. I'm glad you brought that argument up about the military. Now ask this question. Did the military kill Alton Sterling on video? No. Okay. Did the military kill Philando Castile on Facebook live? Did the military choke out Eric Garner? Did the military uh, shoot Walter Scott in the back? Did they do that? Did the military pull up and shoot uh, Tamir Rice dead in an open carry state? Did the military run into Walmart and kill John Crawford carrying a toy gun? Did the military do that? Did the military kill uh, Renisha McBride? Did the military do that? No, they didn't do that. What about did the military kill Oscar Grant? I'm curious about that. Matter of fact, I've talked to many people in the military and it sickens a lot of them how civilian police are because in the military, they can't shoot that quick in a war zone. They will get put underneath the jail. It may be better the military will start policing stuff around here because the civilian cops just kill people and most of you support when they're doing it. And that's the sick part. So Colin Kaepernick, I read his tweets from the time that Alton Sterling and Philando Castile got killed. That shook me to the core to watch that. It had a most response for most people in black America. And then you want to get mad that a black person don't stand up and say, I feel that I'm be we being oppressed and being killed underneath this flag. Cause let's call it what it is. The Confederate flag, the Confederate black battle flag, it's been gone a long time ago. And yet under this flag, Jim Crow happened under this flag, all the uh, lynchings, all the things that happened. So why are you mad? See, the thing is we are more of an educated people now due to the internet. Thank God. And we have been uh, released from the lie. And now we have the truth. And that's why you're seeing this happening more and more. Them days are gone where black people are deceived. And the truth will always set you free. So get mad if you want to with the man. He's following his rights in this nation. But yet you want the man's neck broke. You want his ACL torn. You're burning his jersey like that's going to hurt him or something. You bought the jersey, you fool. You're burning it. I mean, it's yours. Do what you want to do with it. The money still went to whatever place you bought it from. You ain't hurting that man or his paycheck. He said he is prepared to lose it all, to stand up for his, the freedoms and rights of his people. If this man is lying, prove him to be a liar that his people aren't oppressed. His people aren't getting killed and people getting paid vacations. And y'all is giving them hundreds and thousands of dollars on GoFundMe. 
if he's lying, just say, just show how he's lying, but you know, good and well, he's not lying. And then they say, well, if he don't like in America, he can go to Africa. So basically what you're saying is if he don't like the oppression, he don't like the murder, the discrimination, he don't like the celebration of black pain, misery, and death because it is celebrated here in this country. If he doesn't like all that, then he needs to leave. That's basically what you're saying. But yet you're the same people that go to other parts of the world and say, you're doing wrong to other people. You're violating human rights, but the black man and black woman's human rights are being violated daily. And yet you want him to stand up with pride. There's nothing nobody can say about this. Number one, he grown man, do what he want to do. You always got a choice as an athlete nowadays. You can be OJ Simpson or you can be Muhammad Ali. He chose to be Muhammad Ali. Remember you guys say you love Ali. He did exactly what Ali would do. And now you're pissed off. You want his neck broke. You want his ACL torn. You want him to lose his money and lose his career. This is what you want to do. He got money. He good. He don't have to play anymore. No, you still mad. Cause he's still going to speak out. He got a voice and everybody supported him for that. For him standing up for innocent people being murdered in the street. Most of you posted his adopted white parents. And he still got to deal with being a black man in America. Let him go to a small town and nobody know him. Let him run up on Darren Wilson. Watch this going to happen. So at any given time, a black man could be a target. No matter if you got a hundred million dollars or a hundred dollars, you're still a black man in America. Shoot, the president of the United States is disrespected and he's black. It don't matter who you are in this country. He proved that to me. Y'all don't respect nobody. I'm talking about those who believe in white supremacist and white Christian Sharia law. I'm talking about those, not those of you who don't. Y'all need to get your act together, fix this country. Let's live right. Let's live equal. Let's live in peace. Then we could all have some pride to put our hands on our hearts for this country. But until then, you can't say nothing. And there's another player with the Philadelphia Eagles say he's going to sit out as well. He's not going to stand up. So it could be a trend all over the NFL and different professional sports until things are fixed in this country. There's nothing you can say about it. It's peaceful protest. It's part of their rights. Remember, hit me up in the comments, use the commentaries, subscribe.